Codex, understood as a book format, is simply a book built out of leaves on top of each other and held together by sewing or gluing one of the edges of the stack of the leaves. In the respect, it doesn't really matter if the book is written by hand or printed. That is to say, the Codex is the book format that we are nowadays accustomed to. In this video, we shall be dealing with different questions relating the codex format. We shall start with the different parts of the codex and follow with the contest that is of its birth, then to finish with the special modalities of codex that were produced during the Middle Ages. One should not mistake a codex with a tome. A tome is each of the parts of a text that, because its excessive length, has been divided in several parts. On the other hand, understood as book format, the word codex can be understood as an equivalent of volume, although in its origin, volume implies a roll in movement, and therefore a roll or scroll. As previously stated, a codex is a book built by a stack of leaves, bound together on one of their edges. And to progress through the text, the reader only needs to turn the leaves that usually are written on both sides. Usually, but not necessarily, the codex is built up of choirs, that at their time are made out of leaves folded in two through their middle line. Because each of these leaves will form two of the leaves of the book, or folia, we call them bifolia. The choirs made up from a certain number of bifolia are kept together by a sewing thread that runs through the fold. The different parts of a codex are the following. Head is the top edge of the pages, or the front part of the volume. Tail is the bottom edge of the pages, or the back part of the volume. Spine is the edge where the stack of leaves have been bound together. Edge is each of the three sides that haven't been bound together. The edge opposite to the spine is called foredge. Gutta is the part of the bifolia that is nearest to the spine. Outer edge is the part of the bifolia that is nearest to the foredge. And once we know how to refer to the different parts of the codex, we will turn to the issue of its origin, an issue that is not devoid of controversy, as we shall see. To start with, the word codex should already be familiar to you, because in the video about the writing tablets, we saw that one of the names they received in Latin was codex. And the word codex? derives from caudex, that means wood or trunk. And indeed, tablets must have served as an inspiration for the codex format, but we simply don't know the precise historical moment when the technical innovation took place and the rigid material, wood or ivory, was substituted for a flexible material, papyrus or parchment. And it is really regrettable that our sources are so meager in this respect, because the birth of the Codex, and how the Codex superseded the role as the dominant book format, has outstanding considerations of technical and material order, but also of social, cultural, ideological, and even physiological, if we take into account the modifications that the birth of the Codex gave rise in reading habits. For sure, the only thing we can ascertain is that the process had already started in the 1st century AD and was already completed by the 4th, and that in between both dates, the evolution was slow, gradual and complex. From the 1st century AD, our main witnesses are St. Paul's epistle to Timothy and an epigram of the Roman poet Marshall. Marshall's verses go like follows. You, who long for my little books to be with you everywhere, and want to have companions for a long journey, buy these ones which parchment confines within small pages. Give your scroll cases to the great authors. One hand can hold me. 
and that the codex format was not one of Marshall's extravagancies in his time is proven not only by St. Paul's letter, but also by several papyri from the 1st and 2nd centuries found in Egypt, especially from the small fragment known as the Belis Macedonicis and the Petaus Papyrus 30 from a peddler bookseller who specialized in parchment codices. The fact that St. Paul, who writes in Greek, uses the Latin word membrana to refer to his booklets seems to point in the direction of the western part of the Roman Empire as the place of origin of the new format. All these facts led Roberts and Skid to propose their hypothesis that the Codex had been a Christian invention. And as a matter of fact, uh, most all the Christian texts from the second century found until now are written in Codex format, while almost all the pagan ones half role as a support. Therefore, according to this first hypothesis of Robert and Skid in their magnificent study titled The Birth of the Codex, which by the way is available online for free, around 100 AD some Christians in Antioch started to associate the Codex format to the apostolic tradition. On his side, Joseph van Hals defended a Roman and pagan origin for the Codex, although he admits that most probably it was the Christian community of Rome, the group that most decisively contributed to the spread of the book in codex format. And it is very possible that in the pagan circles the use of the codex was associated with education, because the few non-Christian codices preserved from this early period hold texts that were commonly used in the schools. That is, it is very possible that at some moment around the 3rd century, both the streams, Christian and educational, converged to consolidate the new book format. And this theory has found a considerable amount of consensus among the scholars, and therefore the discussion has been transferred from the where to the why of the process. And the reasons that have been put forward are the following ones. The codex is easier to handle than the roll. The codex is easier to transport than the roll. The codex is more resilient than the roll that wears very quickly due to the action of unwinding and rewinding. It is easier to read from a codex than from a roll, and especially it is easier to retrieve a certain passage. A codex can contain more text in less space because its leaves are written on both sides, while the roll receives writing only on the recto. The codex is more accessible from an economical point of view. And still we can add another motive, this time of a sociological nature. The roll had been the carrier of the classical Latin culture, dominated by the senatorial class, but the anarchy of the 3rd century and Diocletian and Constantine's reforms bestowed the power that until that point the senators had held to new social groups of far more vulgar tastes. Summarizing, from the 4th century on, we witness a standardization process in all terrains relating to the different classes of readers, book production workshops, and morphological structure of the book. And the end of this process was witnessed by the start of the medieval period. But even so, the books in codex format can be very different from each other. In the minutes that follow, we shall see the special forms that the codex book can adopt. A single choir codex is the most archaic form of codex. In it, all the bifolia form a single choir, with the inconvenience that either the foredge is not flat, or else the central pages of the codex are narrower than the outer pages. We have a nice collection of single choir codices in the Gnostic library found in Hammadi. A booklet is a very thin volume, generally just a few bifolia or even only one bifolium. Although most booklets have been preserved bound together in sets of booklets or together with other pieces, they are independent structurally and they were circulated on their own. 
The text contained in a booklet is always short, but the actual length cannot be determined a priori since it depends on the format of the leaves and the size of the hand. A junk that is quite commonly found in booklets is the sermon. A notebook is a choir of small dimensions. A pocket book is a volume small enough to be taken by the owner on a regular basis inside a pocket. A virtual book is also a book of small dimensions, conceived to accompany its owner in all occasions, since it has a chemise in the guise of a bark and hung from the belt by means of a sleeve that prolonged the chemise and ended up in a thick knot or bow. A folding book is a volume whose sleeves, in order to reduce size, were folded once or several times on themselves. It was carried hanging from the belt as well, and used to be a faithful companion to physicians and apothecaries. A ledger book, culture book, or lectern book is a very big book that, because of its dimension, needed some sort of support to be read. Chain books, or cadenati, are books that, to prevent burglary, were chained to their desks or bookshelves. A miscellaneous book is a book in which texts from a variegated origin have been compiled in a succession. Basically, a miscellaneous book was the result of the wish of a certain individual of having together several short texts that could be complete brief works or fragments of longer ones. As the miscellaneous books were conceived for personal use, the compiler could alter some texts if he deemed it convenient, or add personal notes without any sort of warning, or even intersperse a short text of his own among the others without any mention of authorship. The miscellaneous book is a typical product of the Middle Ages, since the classical world had only known and utilized books of unitary character made up of a single work, or at most several works of the same author collected in an organic assemblage. The description and cataloging of miscellaneous books is one of the most complicated tasks that a codicologist can expect to assume, starting with the identification of the texts transmitted in the book. Just to mention an example, it took W.J. Wilson 42 pages to catalogue an alchemical codex of Arnaldus of Brussels preserved in the University Library of Lehigh and almost 200 pages to describe it. A composite volume is a codex made up of two or more independent codicological units. We understand a codicological unit as a part of a volume that has been executed in a single operation in the same conditions of place, time, and technique. Sometimes it can happen that several codicological units, once independent, are bound together and nowadays form one composite volume. In these cases, the different codicological units of the same volume are called sectors. And each sector is individualized by means of a Latin capital letter or a Roman number, and therefore we refer to sector A, sector B, and so on, or sector Roman 1, Roman 2, etc. Mm -hmm.